Brenda Novak, New York Times bestseller. We've got a new series, uh, again, starting with White Heat. Just a real unique kind of suspense story, and you've, you've based the first book with a, a cult, and uh, I was just intrigued with the whole story. I loved your uh -huh. characters. You always draw us in, and I want you to tell the readers Thank all you. about it. Okay, well, <laughs> this new series is, um, you know, romantic suspense, which is what yeah. I've been writing, but it's a new um, trilogy that's based on a security, private security contractor that's based in L.A. So you get a little bit of that renegade aspect because they are in the private sector. They can bend the rules a little bit more, and I liked that as an author being able to play with, with that some, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to deal with, oh, a cop would never be allowed to do that, or that isn't exactly how he would approach it. These are yeah. people who could approach it in, in a myriad of ways. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I really liked that aspect, and I liked putting, you know, a female and a male operative together that worked for the same, same um, company, and they go undercover in Paradise, which is actually a ghost town. Um, the, the name was just too tempting. You know, it, it is a real place. Um, oh. Of course, in my story, this cult has taken over the place, and that hasn't happened in real life. But um, that's where Nate and Rachel must go undercover. And in order to be privy to sort of their inner sanctum and some of the, the rituals that they do, they have to pretend to be married. And so they go in as a married couple, which, you know, they've got a little bit of background between themselves. And so that makes it a little tense for yeah. them to yeah. have to go undercover in this way. And uh, of course, they're they're without outside support because they're in the middle of the desert in this little commune, and this one man has ultimate power, and so it makes it uh, kind of dicey. It's not like they can just call for backup, at a, a, you know, if, if they need it, and, and have the cavalry arrive instantly. Yeah. And book two is book two is um, Body Heat. Okay. And that one is set. Also, all three books are set, set in Arizona. In, mm -hmm. I grew up in Arizona. I love how atmospheric it is <laughs> and those monsoons that roll yeah. in and. You know, it's a very cool place, and there are some very unusual locations in Arizona. So this one is set um, right on the border, and it, it deals with there are some murders that are taking place where um, illegal aliens who are attempting to cross are being shot and killed at point-blank range and just left to rot in the desert. So this um, small town sheriff is the heroine, and she's got to figure out what's going on, and she's completely out of her element because, you know, she's used to doing drunk and disorderly. You know, murder Ooh. is not something that is, is, she's got a lot of experience doing, and the way she got her job as young as she is was somewhat political, and so she feels a little bit out of her depth, but one of the um, eight uh, operatives from Department 6 comes from L.A., and he's from this small town, and so people encourage him to come back and try and help with this problem, and his loyalties bring him back, even though he's he doesn't really want to go home. He's the... Uh, He's the bastard son of a, a local rancher. Mm -hmm. um, his mother was an illegal alien who worked for him. And so he has really sort of some split loyalties and, and some bitterness left over from the way he was treated. And so it's kind of an interesting um, visit to his past when he goes back. But he's determined to help solve these crimes. And so he and the sheriff uh, have to sort of partner together and oh, get it done. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, I like yeah. that one. That one's actually my favorite yeah. of the three. Yeah. And so. book three, then, is? Um, that's called Killer Heat, okay. and that one's uh, set up in School Valley. Again, a name okay. that I just was too tempted by. It's a real place. Okay. And so this one, they, they find a mass grave of all these women who have been killed over a number of years, and they're thinking, you know, how could this be going on? We had no idea. And so they've got to go after the killer, and um, that one is... Uh, uh, is a PI from Chandler who gets involved searching for a woman who's gone missing and she mm -hmm. fears that she might be one of these victims and that one really starts off with a bang. I, I had a, a reader read that aloud at, at an event that I did and she was like breathless when she got done so I, I really like the way that one starts out. That one goes yeah. at a gallop. Now the reader event you're talking about the fan, fan yeah, 2010, fan 2010 and you're going to have 2011 and you and mm -hmm. Christine Fian had gotten together and created this reader event. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. What, how much fun you had at 2010. Oh, I know you did. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's set in old Sacramento um, oh. on a riverboat, 1920s riverboat, which oh. is a really unique setting. Yeah. Um, and so we, we have parties galore. We give away fabulous um, prizes, and everybody gets, you know, at, at each party, they get some gift to take home. And so we, we plan all year trying to figure out what that's going to be and to make it better than before. And so Christine and I um, are a natural fit, even though she writes paranormal normal and I write suspense we just get along really great and I think that there's a lot of crossover in that type of readership they're uh, open-minded in trying you know the other authors work at least that's what it felt like last year we, you know yeah. I felt like I got a lot of new fans from it I think it went the other way as well and so it's just something we thought would be a great way to introduce our work to new fans and be able to do something together and to thank those who have been so loyal to us and supported us in our careers and you know just a fun party to look forward to every year yeah you know one thing uh, I think especially with you two authors, uh, your 
characters are so strong and if you're a character uh, reader mm -hmm. I can see where the readers would enjoy reading both of you because yeah, you I both so. uh, do a wonderful yeah. job so Brenda if you were to give advice to an, an aspiring new author um, just one thing what what would it be well I think that everything starts with believing in yourself so um, I've been asked that question before and my answer is always believe I mean I think if you do believe then you'll do whatever's necessary um, in order to uh, accomplish that, the goal that you've set out for yourself, whether it's getting published or whether it's hitting a list or you know, whatever aspect of your career you're after. And right. um, I think that it, it does take a lot of behind the scenes work, but you have to have that faith. That's what makes it all possible. And as long as you have that, you know, the sky's the limit. And one thing, Brenda, you, you carry that throughout your life though. Uh, and I'm speaking to the Diabetes Foundation. You've done such a wonderful job bringing awareness to the, to the disease and also raising money. Uh, tell the viewers a little bit about what you've done. I well, think it's this remarkable. this is an exciting year for us because yeah. ever since my son was diagnosed um, eight years ago, I had a dream of raising a million dollars um, to fight this disease. And I had no idea how I was gonna do that. I had five little kids at home. I was just launching a writing career. It seemed overwhelming. Um, and yet it was always on my mind, always searching. What could I do, what could I do? And I, I couldn't come up with that idea that I needed, you know, the vehicle. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me as I was attending another fundraiser that, you know, I realized everybody has to come to a certain location. You've got to feed them all. It's tough to do these yeah. in-person fundraisers. Yeah. And all of a sudden it, it hit me, you know, I've got all this traffic I've already established at my website. What if I do um, an online fundraiser that would invite my fans and, and industry professionals like yourself, who's been so good to support it, to, to get involved? Mm -hmm. And uh, the first year we raised 35000 which sounded huge then. Now it sounds paltry, but, um, you know, it, it told me that it worked. And yeah. so I just, it was like a snowball. I just started it small and just kept rolling and rolling. And um, it, it grew. I mean, it doubled the next year and it doubled the next year. And even in this recession, when most um, fundraisers are really languishing and a lot of charities you know are, are suffering because it's hard to get donations when people are worried about basics yeah, yeah. Um, so but we've we've been very fortunate yeah. we've set a new record every year and this last May we we broke that million dollar mark so Yay, congratulations yeah, big that's very on in my heart <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well Brenda we really enjoy your stories we enjoy your characters and and can't wait for more so all the oh, best to you, you and thanks for being here thank you this has been great